let me jump in. So I, I mentioned I'm playing a 4-2-3-1, so I'm going to have my two holding midfielders here. I'm going all United Kingdom here. Aaron <laughs> Cuthbert from Scotland. <laughs> a plus toughness. I will never, it's one of the sports moments that like I have these flashball moments that I just kind of carry with me. It was in the Champions League against Real Madrid. Aaron Cuthbert takes a head to the face, immediately gets a really kind of gross shiner. She goes over to the sideline. Emma Hayes looks at her, notices it, and like is visibly shaken by how fast this black eye has uh, developed on <laughs> Cuthbert's face. It's like, whoa, Jesus. And Cuthbert just goes, don't fucking take me out of the game. And just immediately <laughs> runs, takes a sip of water and immediately runs back from it. She's everything you would want from a defensive midfielder. Super smart, incredibly tough, like I mentioned. And she can score when you need it. Had a brace in, in her last uh, Champions League match. She has great like kind of field general, but also isn't going to try to do too much either. And if I needed to pick a counterpart for her, Give me Georgia Stanway, as smart of a player as you can find on the field. She was an absolute pivotal part of the Lionesses uh, making it to the final. So, yeah, give me Cuthbert and Stanway, my all United Kingdom defensive midfielders there. I love it. Yeah, I also had uh, Aaron smash a beer can on my forehead, Cuthbert on <laughs> in my midfield as well. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love how much, uh, you know, how much overlap we added. I got a total kick out of it. And my other kind of defensive midfield spot in that like number six role. I actually have Aitana Bonmati dropped a little deeper than normal. I kind of like the idea of, well, before we get into what I liked about the idea, I mean, she's obviously, for my money, the best player in the world. She wins everything. She's top 10 in every stat. There's not going to be a single starting 11 this year without her on it. I just kind of like the idea of like her ball control and starting the offense from a deeper spot on the field. And I mean, she's so accurate and so smart that she could just kind of shrink the field. We can get the break started a little deeper. We'll see if she can kind of hold up defensively. And, you know, truth be told, I want to maximize my offense, you know, so we'll see later on. I'm also in a 4-2-3-1. Very interesting pick. I like I like the idea of getting the attack started further back. I you do raise a good point. Like how well does she hold up in defense? But what am I going to do? Be like, "Oh, I don't know how good Bo Mati is going to be." Like, what has she not done to prove her greatness pretty much anywhere on the pitch? Declan Rice vibes with uh, what's oh, happening wow. at Arsenal, who can kind of like drop a little deep, but also very offensive minded. Yeah. So I'm kind of channeling a little bit of that with my squad. Sounds about right. All right. So now to the attack. Why don't you kick us off? What did you have up front? So let's see. I'll, I'll start in the center. This is where we're going to have some more overlap. So my number 10, it's got to be Bone Mati uh, for me. I'm going to play her in her natural position. She's one of the best distributors in the world. I want her in that natural position to where she can kind of see the front side of the field, not have to go too far up, but also take her scoring chances. If I have Bone Mati leading me into the final third, I think I'm pretty much always going to feel pretty good about that. Over on the left wing, we've talked about her a lot on this podcast. I don't think this is really going to come as a surprise to anybody. Give me Lauren James. I think she is just the odd and I, I don't mean that pejoratively, but kind of the odd pace that she presents, where we, we've mentioned it several times, she goes at her own pace. It doesn't look like she's that fast, but she gets past everybody. She doesn't look like she's going with a high motor, but she's outlasting everybody on the field. Like everything about her game kind of keeps people off balance. And then the service into the box uh, or into the channel, if you will, for, for other attacking players <laughs> making runs is just second to none, I think. If you have her on the left wing serving balls into the middle, I think you're going to be in really good shape. And you can always just, you could run the switch with her and Bone Mati and just everybody panics at that point on the defense with, oh my with God, those yeah. two out there. So yeah, give me Lauren James on the left wing and then another into the channel favorite as well, I guess maybe I shouldn't preface everybody with that because considering we're picking our favorite players on this podcast. But give me Carolyn Graham Hansen, the Norwegian hero on the right wing about as smart of a player as you could ask for, will give you perfect service from the other side. So that midfield, I'm going from left to right. Lauren James, Aitana Bonmati, and then Carolyn Graham Hansen, CGH. She gets the full initial treatment. Carolyn Graham Hansen, a hero among an incredible squad on Barcelona. I just think there's no way you, you could argue there are two or three better right wings in the world than her right now. Yeah, man. I love your lineup. Love the attack. I mean, CGH, Caroline Graham Hansen, probably the most dubious snub from the FIFA Pro list. I mean, embarrassing. How the fuck? Like, come on, man. Like, what are we doing? Uh, on my side, 
a lot of overlap, like you mentioned. I've got LJ in my number 10 spot. Sure. We've been talking about her kind of controlling more of the offense. And in my mind, Bournemouth is winning balls in the midfield, finding LJ immediately. And I think the thing about Lauren James is it's like her processing power. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of my guy, John Champion. One of my favorite calls of his was, um, I think it might have been a Rashford goal. And he just says, smash and grab. Like, And I was just like, hell yeah, I fucking love that. (laughs) And that to me is like LJ. I think her processing power, like her brain power or her football brain is unrivaled. And I think what we're actually seeing is she's just making decisions way faster. By the time you realize what she's trying to do, she's already done it. It's over. Like you're cooked. Mm -hmm. I was looking back at the one timer she had in the World Cup where the ball's coming into her, you know, and usually a player will you know, sort of watch the ball center themselves and just kind of like prepare for a perfect strike. And the ball's in the air and she's just looking at the keeper. She's like, all right, I see what I'm going to do here. Finds the ball again and just smashes it one time from like 20 yards out. Perfect strike. And she's just processing shit at a different level so i've got her in my number 10 i want her kind of like creating offense and then that gives me the opportunity to play cgh on the right and introduce another itc favorite salma parihuelo on the left and now we are gunning so th- that's my left and right wing and up front little curveball give me she came up on our on our nwsl episode as part of a different conversation give me khadijah bunny shaw yeah. Give me her productivity. One of our absolute favorite reggae girls with a Z. Strong, fast, runs hard, plays hard. Headers, absolutely clinical. Otherworldly productivity. Nine goals in nine matches this season with another two assists. Throw those in there. Last season, 2022-2023. Bunny Shaw, 22 starts, seven assists, 20 goals in 22 starts. Good. Let's fucking go. I mean, <laughs> I, tough to get more productive than that. And I just like yeah. the, if all else fails... Get it to Bunny. Give her a chance to do something. But why would all else fail? My team's fucking loaded. I'm pretty pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that the Perriuelo, Bunny Shaw overlapping runs, you know, into the middle. With your squad, I feel like with both our squads, but with your squad especially, you could just play short corners every time. And it yeah. would be horrifying for the defense. <laughs> because... <laughs> You could play the short corner and then Perriuelo is at the six before you even realize it. And she might be dishing it off to fucking Bunny Shaw or Aitana Bonmati or Laura James standing there. So I like the And it's one of those where a lot of times the cross just kind of squirts through. For any cross that kind of squirts through, it's getting smashed in by Graham Hansen or whichever direction it's going. Somebody's (laughs) finding the end of it and it's just smashing it home. So this would be just like an epic, you know, Space Jam level matchup uh, of our two sides. I would love to see it actually happen. You would be tough to defend. And so that's where we get to the final overlapping player. Obviously, if you've listened to this podcast, I am not leaving Beta Uelo out of the squad. I have already said I, I think that she has an argument with Bon Mati as possibly the best player in the world. So she would be my striker. She would be my number nine at the top, completing the 4-2-3-1. What can you say about Betty Uelo that we haven't already said? She's fast. She's a genius. By this point, I believe we have compared her parts of her game to <laughs> Ronaldo, R9, from Brazil. We've compared her to Cristiano Ronaldo. We've compared her to... Mbappe. You compared her to Kylian Mbappe. She's got it all. Every piece that you could want as a young player. And I think in 20 years, if a player is great enough, maybe they'll be lucky enough to be compared to her. So Mm. no shock that we have the overlap there. But let me say, Bunny Shaw, difficult for me as a sky blue myself to leave her out. She was probably my most difficult cut, I would say. Yeah, I got my 11 in a couple days before you and I was dying to see yours because I was just like, at first I was like, I can't imagine we have the same team. And then I was like, I can't imagine we have different, like I just, I, I was so dying to see where your head was at. And then I thought I was kind of being cute. Like I was like, all right, give me Cuthbert, like in the middle. Like I just love her toughness. And, and like, of course you've got her in the same spot, almost the same back four. I definitely got a kick out of seeing uh, both of our sides. 